Okay, um, we're ready to start our next topping, which is going to be onions. Before we do, I'm just going to make a few adjustments to the names of our layers. Um, the crust layer that I, I've named crust should be pizza crust. The uh, chili pepper layer, I just want to make sure it's chili pepper and I want to spell it correctly. And then it's a good idea to lock the chili pepper layer so that we don't accidentally select it. Let's create a new layer. Let's call this layer onions. And we can work over on the blank part of our artboard. So uh, earlier when I was creating the chili pepper, I referred to this as a document, and it, it is a document, but in Illustrator, the active document area is called an artboard, and then the gray area outside of that is called the pasteboard. So we're going to work on the blank part of the artboard to create our first onion, and then we'll just create the onion once, and we'll copy, paste, uh, rotate, resize, in order to fill our pizza with an onion topping. So we're going to create our onion slice. We don't want to make it too large. We want it to we, we want to draw it with our pen tool to be about the same size as it would be placed on our pizza to begin with. So we can zoom in quite a bit and Let's choose the pen tool. So a shortcut to choose the pen tool is just to press the, the P key. Let's draw an onion slice. So I'm clicking and dragging with the mouse. And right now my fill and stroke are both at none. So I have kind of an invisible object here. So let me choose the stroke swatch and choose black for the color just so that we can see it. All right, so I may not be completely happy with this shape that I've created. So let me go to the direct selection tool, zoom in so I can see what I'm doing and I have these anchor points that I can click and drag around and I'm just going to make a few adjustments here. I can also click and rotate these handles that are attached to my anchor points if I want to change the direction of the path. So I'm just making a, a few adjustments, but this does not, it's supposed to look like a, a, a natural object, not a perfect um, ellipse or oval. So we want a little bit of imperfection is good. Okay, so now we've created our outer edge of our onion. And the onion is a ring shape, so it's going to be hollow in the middle. We still need an inner edge of our ring. So we could use the pen tool to draw a brand new object, but let's go ahead and copy and paste our current object so that we can make an inner ring. So with this object selected, let's hit Command C and then Shift Command V, which paste the copy directly on top of our original, hold shift option and drag to resize and make it a bit smaller. And now let's, um, what I'm going to do just for illustration purposes, and this is not something that you need to do, is I'm going to fill these with different colors. Because I want to show you that we have two objects, both have a solid fill on them, and both have a black stroke. The inner object, which is green, we created second because it's a copy of the original, which is red. So the object that we created second 
is sitting on top of the object that we created first and it's blocking out the lower object. So we can think of the inner or green object that we created later as sitting on top of or layered on top of our red object that we created earlier. And if I dr drag that out of the way, you can see I've got two solid objects there. The green one is on top of, or we can imagine it being on top of the, the red. We need to subtract the green from the red so that we can create a ring shape and have this part that's currently filled with green, it'll just be transparent. There won't be any, um, the object will not occupy this part of the artboard. So we have a handy tool to do that. Let's go to Window and choose Pathfinder. And we have a few options with Pathfinder. Um, in order to use Pathfinder, we need to select both the objects that we want to affect. And so what we're actually going to do is we're going to use Pathfinder, we're going to use this minus front shape mode to subtract this green object that's sitting on top from the red object sitting below it. So we need to select both objects and um, we can choose minus front. Now we no longer have a green object, but what it's done is it's merged with the red object below it to create this ring shape. So if we were to drag that over the top of our drawing, we can see that there's, it's basically, it's hollow. And that's what we want. So next we're going to make sure that our onion slice looks a little bit more realistic. So let's make sure we select it and then I have a stroke of one point or a stroke weight of one point applied, which should, which should be about right. We need to make sure that there's a stroke applied. And then we're going to go to the object menu and choose expand. Just hit OK. Uh, fill and stroke ought to be checked here, but hit OK. What that does is it creates new paths that conform to the width of our stroke. So instead of having this one central path with the one point stroke on either side of it, we now have our central path plus a stroke, uh, a plus a path indicating the outside edge of the stroke and a path indicating the inside ed edge of the stroke. And uh, we can illustrate that just by um, taking the color off or making our color none. And now you can see you've got several strokes here. And that will help us in our, when we apply an effect, it'll make it look a little bit more realistic. So let's go ahead and fill our shape with a color. So we want to make sure the Fill swatch is active, double click on it, fill it with the color that's been given to us. Then we're going to go to the effect menu, choose stylize, inner glow, and then we're going to set the value. So we want multiply for the blend mode, opacity 50%, which I already have, and let's try a blur of one. Now let's see what happens if we, yeah, let's just do a blur of one. Let's try preview, okay, there we go. So you can see that we have some different effects here. It looks like the um, outer edge of our Onion slice is getting a little bit darker and blending into a lighter center. So let's see if we put one on there. It's not too discernible. So how about let's do three or two. We we want kind of a subtle effect. Let's hit OK. We can always change this later if we needed to. 
Now we need to make kind of the lighter fleshy part of our onion. We're going to copy and paste. So Command C, Command Shift V, to make our copy directly above our original. Shift Option to drag from the center point to make it a bit smaller. Let's fill this with white. And let's apply another inner glow to this one. So we'll go to Effect, Stylize, Inner Glow. And let's do Preview. Now the tutorial says to apply an inner glow of two pixels, but I think that we need to, um, we, we want to make it a little bit more than that. So we get kind of this, uh, kind of like that purple bleeding into it. Four might work, three or four, hit okay. Now one thing we, to keep in mind is that we can modify this if we're not happy with it. If we don't like that effect, we can go to the appearance panel, we can choose our inner glow, and we can go ahead and make our changes. So we're not stuck with the exact settings that we um, that we chose to begin with. We can make those changes later. Just make sure you have the preview box checked so that you can see the effect that your changes are making. All right, so we now have an onion slice. Let's give it a little bit of a dimension by applying a drop shadow. So we need to select both parts of it. We've got the purple ring that's forming the outer skin of our onion, and we've got this kind of whitish ring that's forming the flesh. We can click and drag over both objects in order to select them both at the same time. Let's right click and choose group. We're going to go to effect, stylize, drop shadow. Um, these are the settings that we want. I already had mine set because I was experimenting a little bit ahead of time, but yours probably won't be the same. So you want to use these settings. They're the same ones that are in the in the online tutorial and hit OK. And let's zoom out a bit to see the results. And that looks pretty good. So the next thing we need to do is start placing our onion slice. So we're just going to click and drag it onto our pizza. All right, and, and artfully place it around. You're going to uh, Command C, Command V to copy and paste, rotate. You can distort these a bit to make them all slightly different, resize, and you need at least a dozen of these placed around so that they look like they're uh, randomly located on top of your pizza. All right, um, I'd say about a, a dozen are a bare minimum. I've got more than that here. So you want it to look pretty appetizing, like, like there's not too many blank spots. Let's move on to step 17, which is creating an olive. So our next topping is olives. Let's go to our onions layer, lock that layer, create a new layer. Above that, call that layer olives. And on our olives layer, with that one active, we're going to go to the ellipse tool. And we're going to create an ellipse shape. And again, we can zoom in a bit. We can make our topping about the size that we wanted on our final illustration. 
Let's rotate it a little bit. Let's choose the gradient tool. Click on our gradient slider to bring out these swatches. First swatch, or I should say the the uh, right hand swatch, let's choose, uh, double click that, choose WebSafe RGB, because these are the types of colors that are being specified for us. Type in the color code. And same thing with the left hand swatch. I'm going to type in the color code there. We've got our olive. The gradient helps to give it a little bit of a dimension, but it's still looking kind of flat. So we need to create more of a highlight. Oh, uh, one reason it's looking a little bit flat is because we want our type of gradient to be radial, not linear. So it's a bit rounder. OK, so let's make our olive look a little bit more three-dimensional. Let's add a highlight. So go to the ellipse tool, click and drag out a small ellipse on top of your olive object. We can fill that with white and then go to transparency and reduce the transparency or opacity to 20%. Um, let's rotate this a bit to match the angle of our larger shape and we've got a highlight. So let's select both objects group so that we can move these objects together and but before we do that let's add a um, let's add a drop shadow to to give it some more dimension so go to effect stylize drop shadow and we'll use the parameters given to us in the tutorial Make sure the color is what we want. We want to keep this orange sort of a color. Let's put on preview so we can see a preview of our shadow. It looks pretty good. Hit OK. Zoom out a little bit, get a sense of our object here. All right, so now we need to do the same thing with the olive. We're going to copy, paste, resize, rotate, position so that it looks like they've been randomly spread across the top part of our pizza. We need at least a dozen of these to make it look full and appetizing. Okay, so when you're finished placing your olives and your other toppings as well, just make sure that you they, they look sufficiently random toppings. Uh, olives shouldn't all be going in the same direction. Just make sure that you rotate them so that they uh, none of them are aligned with each other. We don't want to be able to pick up a kind of artificial pattern. Okay, so now that we've completed our olives layer, Let's just double check and make sure that we did place our olives all on the same layer. So you should have your olives layer selected and we can toggle this little visibility icon off and on. And if all of our olives disappear when we toggle it off, all of them appear when we toggle it on, we know that we've done uh, everything the way we should. That same thing goes for our other toppings. If we wanted to make some adjustment to the onions layer, we could hide the olives. We could unlock our onions layer, and then we could start working on that. And let's say we wanted to make some kind of adjustment. But we're going to move on to our last major step. First of all, we need to lock our olives layer and create a new layer. 
and make sure that that layer is above the olives layer. So if it came in below it like mine did, then I would click and drag it to the top. And we'll call this layer leaves. So the tutorial that's been given asks us to find a flower from our symbol library and choose the poppy flower. And here's the illustration of the poppy flower. It's showing us a screen grab of our flowers symbol library. And this is a few years old, so it's showing an older version of Illustrator. And we no longer have this poppy flower available in our symbol library. So we're going to create it ourselves. But I would like to just show you a few things about the symbol library, even though we're not going to use it. So the symbol library is accessible along the right hand menu. And if we were to drag that out, the symbol is filled with vector graphics that are pre-created um, pre for us. So we've got some default ones in here, but if we click on this option menu, go to open symbol library, uh, we, the arrows one is the one that's turned on right now, but we've got several in here. And the tutorial is asking you to go to the flower symbol library, choose the poppy flower, which doesn't exist, and uh, drag it to the artboard and then just we would just use a piece of it. So just for a matter of illustration, um, these if I was to drag this to the artboard, one of these flowers, we have a vector graphic here that we can we can use and we can resize it and you know treat it like any other object. Um, in order to modify it, so let's say we just wanted to use this leaf from this flower, we would right click, choose break link to symbol, and then we would ungroup it. Okay, so we could even do something like just drag parts of this flower um, to use them separately. So let's say we wanted to use these thorns, for example, we could drag those away. In this case, if we wanted to isolate this leaf from the rest of the flower, it's not as straightforward because it's attached. It's it's part of this entire object. And so what we would have to do is go into our direct selection tool and we could click and drag over the different anchor points and delete parts of the flower that we don't need. All right, but we're going to draw our own because I really don't think there's anything suitable in here that we can use that'll look like something like a piece of oregano or whatever. All right, so what we do need to do is grab the image from our lesson files and place that on our artboard. So make sure that your leaves layer is active. We'll go to File, Place, choose this pizza leaf JPEG, click to place. We can make this a bit smaller. We're just placing it on our artboard like we did for the uh, pepper image that so that we can use this as a template to draw over with our pen tool. Let's let's make a a, a new layer. And Let's also call that leaves. Okay, so on this lower layer, we have our image. Let's lock that layer for now so we don't, don't actually move anything. Double click the layer, choose dim images to 50%. Go to our leaves layer that we just created right above our leaves layer with the template image on it. Choose P to go to the pen tool. We need to make sure that so that we can understand the object shape that we're creating, let's um, let's make the fill none and the stroke, we can make it black. And we can make a skinny path. And then let's just go ahead and 
you know, zoom in as close as you need to. Click and drag to create your leaf shape. And this is going to have a lot more anchor points than the pepper or the onion slice because there's more places where the path needs to change direction because it's a more complex kind of a shape. Now, a leaf is an organic shape, so we don't have to make ours machine perfect and symmetrical. In fact, it would look kind of strange if we did that. So we just need to click and drag to make sure that we have curved paths rather than um, angular pointed areas where the paths where the path changes direction. So the path has the potential to change directions every time we set an anchor point. And we want to drag our mouse in the direction that we want the path to go. This will place the handles in that direction as well and our path will follow along. So click and drag, click and drag. Only make as many anchor points as you need. So every time you change direction, or you would like your path to change direction, place an anchor point and drag in the direction that you want your path to go. So the key is to click and drag each time for an organic shape so that we don't have any uh, pointed angles and to make only as many anchor points as you need in order for the path that you're creating to follow the shape that we're tracing over. All right. You can certainly, when you're finished with the path that you're creating, make sure you close it at the end. And um, if you want to make a few adjustments, like I have a little um, hiccup here at the on the stem, use your direct direct selection tool to move your anchor points or. Uh, reposition your handles. But this doesn't have to be perfect. There's really no perfect. It just has to look kind of natural and follow the general outline or shape of the or contour of your image that you're tracing. All right, so what we can do now is Let's rotate our leaf object that we just created so that it's kind of sitting at an angle like that. We no longer need our image that we traced, so we can unlock that layer, select it, and delete it. Make sure that we have our new leaves layer selected, the one that has our object on it. Now might be a good time to save, so Command S to save your work. Should save more often than, uh, than I've been showing you here. And let's apply a color gradient. So with your leaf object selected, double click your gradient tool, click on the gradient slider, in the right hand swatch, let's again we're going to use our web safe colors. Let's go uh, type in the code that we've been given. In the left hand swatch, type in the code we've been given for that swatch. And this is um, this is according to the online tutorial
All right, and let's change the angle of our um, gradient. And let's make it uh, linear. Again, I have to go to change the angle. So linear as type, and then change the angle to 12.5. All right, so that looks about right according to the example we've been given. We do want to, let's make the stroke none. So let's choose none for the stroke color. And then let's add a drop shadow to give this some dimension. So let's go to effect, stylize, drop shadow, type in the parameters that we're given. Make sure the color is what we want, again, according to the tutorial. We can check our preview button so we can see the effect that we're having. So our effect is a raster effect made out of pixels. Hit OK. And we can start placing this topping now. So same thing as before, you're going to place at least, uh, I'd say about a dozen of these minimum. You need to resize, go ahead. We don't want these to be too overwhelming in size. Command C, Command V, copy and paste, make sure just as the other toppings were, that this is sufficiently random looking. So change the direction, rotate them, change the size on these so that they're not all exactly the same. All right, so we have our final topping placed. We're all done. Maybe you want to zoom out to take a look at it. We've got a little garnish here on the cutting board just to give it some interest. And let's make sure we command S to save. So we want to save our original AI file with the layers preserved. And then we also want to create a JPEG. So we can imagine that we might be placing this onto a web page or something like that. So we need, a, we need a raster version of our vector graphic. That's what the JPEG will do. So let's go to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. Make sure we have JPEG, Maximum. We can leave the resolution alone. Choose Save. And then let's make sure that we have uh, navigate to our assignment folder, the same one that your original AI file is placed in, and just hit save. It, if you notice that there's a checkbox that says hide extension, if we uncheck this, we see that we have an extension called .jpeg, so that's not something that you would type in. If you were to type that in up here with the hide extension, option hidden, well then it will automatically uncheck for you. But um, you want uh, .jpeg is the file format and just hit save.